Eric, I want to do a follow-up question. It's kind of in the same vein, but I, I really want to hear from a, a woman's perspective. And obviously being a professional uh, business person, you're out there in the world from a limiting beliefs from, and I'm, I guess I'm going to bring it to, to society. Mm-hmm. Has there been anything that, you know, you kept bumping into, especially as a, a, a business professional and a, and a woman that's really started to build uh, a belief in you that mm-hmm. this is not the right place for me, I'm not doing the right thing or any of those kind of things? Um, I've had an experience uh, somewhat in that vein, but it was in a, a positive Realm. Oh, good. Um, good. I'm, I'm by nature a, a more soft-spoken person. Now, if I'm in the courtroom, uh, my voice is louder and it's, it can be more aggressive. But just day to day, I'm a soft-spoken person. And I was at work one day. I was working for national law, uh, this national labor and employment law firm, and I was working directly under the one of the founding partners of the firm. And so I went to his office and I knocked, you know, his door was open, but I knocked and I said, you know, um, hey, you know, and I'll say his name. I said, hey, Marty, um, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt what you're doing. And then he was writing on his journal and he looked up and he said, Erica, never, ever apologize. Never apologize. Hmm. Uh, if you need to speak with me, if you need to come in knock and say, you know, do you, do you have a moment, but never apologize. Hmm. You need that's to a, speak to That's me. a great lesson. I like that. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a really good lesson to yeah. have. I think we, I think we uh, sometimes forget that, you know, whereas guys, maybe y'all are taught that, or maybe that's just a natural um, react, or, you know, a natural conditioning. But as women, I think, in the workplace, we have to learn that many of us, some don't, but many of us have to learn that, you know, if you need that time, say it, just be, go in there and this has occurred, or I have this information, is this a good time for you? And um, say it, don't apologize for taking up someone's time. That's what they're there. That's their, <laughs> literally, that's their job. And they're expecting you to do your job. And if there's some news to bring, they want you to bring it, but don't apologize. And, uh, and again, that's a self-limiting belief that many women have um, based upon conditioning or some self-imposed limitations. And I want to kind of pick up right there, too, because the word choices that we use really, I think, uh, have a great impact, not just the word choices and how we communicate with others, but also how we communicate with ourselves. And Erica, that's a great example, um, because you and some people can probably relate to this, talking about saying, I'm sorry. And that there are those times when you apologize to yourself because you have a certain behavior or you're, you're not doing a certain thing that you know you should be doing. And it's OK to give yourself some grace. I, we all understand that. But again, you don't need to say I'm sorry to yourself uh, because you are that person who is a the most accountable for self. Right. And that's, I think, the biggest piece of self-awareness. And Chris hit it right on the head when he said, you know, don't just focus on all the positives and don't just focus on all the negatives. You have to look at the whole gamut of what's there. Uh, and that is where I think the true awareness comes from is being open and honest with yourself so that you can evaluate those things. And, you know, Erica, you say you journal, um, but same thing. Um, what do you focus on when you're journaling? And when that one little thought creeps in and you go, oh, I don't want to put that on there because so you're actually limiting what you're really exposing your your thought process to uh, because you can say, I don't want to capture that, but I want to capture this because you want to stay on the positive side of it, however that may be. But the key piece there is to capture it all, right? You, you've got to be able to filter through all of those pieces because if you don't, that same negative thing is just going to sit there. It's going to nag because you know it's there, but you want to choose to put blinders on so you don't see it. Mm-hmm. And there's no way to fix or repair or get beyond it unless you literally just kind of go straight at it. And and that lesson was taught by a man. So Mm -hmm. when you guys have women in the workplace, you know, especially uh, women who are just entering the workplace or they're trying to 
grow professionally up to where, where you all are. If you see that, sometimes sometimes the person's personality is that you can't address it or help um, help them in that way. But if it's somebody that is coachable, by all means, share with them lessons that you all learned in dealing with how to maneuver in a corporation or how to maneuver in a law firm or, you know, show them how it's done because at least back from when I was growing up, a lot of girls did not receive that uh, confidence, that uh, coaching on how to approach those situations. So Mm -hmm. if you, if you see someone do that, really a guy or a guy or a woman or man, if they're open to coaching, <laughs> then share with them a way to approach it differently so that that way their career can keep progressing and they're not limiting themselves. I, I don't know how if somebody's not open to coaching, I don't know what to do with that. But if they're open to it, you know, help them. 